Hey everybody, Baboonie Tim here, back with some more gameplay. This one, it's one of those it's one of those games that I had to take a step back from after the game was over and just take some time to think about and process. It was one of those games where things weren't going well for me and in the middle of the game I just felt this sensation, this like dull kind of ache in my chest <laughs> as the game was kind of falling apart, so to say. And um and I was asking myself after the game, like why why was I feeling this way about this game? To some extent, after some searching and some wrestling, I, f I feel like it's because there's a part of my identity that I'm trying to place into being good at redemption. So when I'm making plays that are turning out to be the completely, <clears throat> you know, wrong plays to make, and I keep doing that over and over and over again, that really starts to chip away at any sense of, you know, confidence that I'm, I'm getting from, from having this unhealthy identity in doing well, you know? So I wanted to start off this video by saying, or, or kind of bringing up this topic and wanting to talk about it. It's like, where is our identity coming from? And for me, it's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it's easy for, for us to be caught up in our identity is associated with what we do and how well we do that. And as you know, I've been traveling, doing tournaments and stuff. I've been doing well at the tournaments, you know, not bad. And the power rankings that the Threshing Floor podcast do, they, they placed me at a generous uh, first place. You know? I, I think subconsciously that kind of seeps in. It's like, oh, okay, this is who I am. This is what my expectations are. And you try to hold yourself to that standard. You want to try to, you know, keep, keep it going. But here's the thing, that, that's never going to get satisfied. You know, because like after winning a tournament, the, the question on your mind is like, okay, what's the next tournament I can win? Oh, can I do that again next year? It's this never ending cycle that you're always going to be on. To always try and prove yourself. But I feel like that's the wrong approach to take with something like this, especially like get rid of redemption at the end of the day is a game, game based upon the Bible. And the Bible's all about pointing people to the truth and reality of Jesus and how our identity is found in him and not in the things the world does. The world places so much emphasis on trophies and performance. But that's just not the total paradigm of how our relationship with God is. So this game was like a nice reminder of that fact. Of like, I, Tim, am not uh, going to be identified with how I do or how well I do or how well I don't do. Life is about learning. Life is about living in a way to bring the kingdom of God into earth. And so I'm just kind of uh, talking to myself here, but maybe... Some of this will echo into you, and um, maybe you can find some value in that. All this to say, we have a game here that we're going to dissect, and we're going to break down the shipwreck of this game and keep it fun, keep it informational. Today's match, we were doing a Lackey Grand Prix match for Kevin the Dude, and the, the match here, I, I was not, I think, what's my record in this Lackey Grand Prix? It's either like two and two, and the idea is whoever kind of wins this this match is still in the running for top eight because there's going to be cut to top eight. And during the game, I was kind of nervous. I was kind of letting that go into my mind about like, oh man, I got to win this. I got to win this. And um, I feel like that kind of affected my mental too. Just putting the stakes too much on myself. Okay, so let's see. He uh, wins the die roll. He gets to go first. He has an amazing face star ability to play Lost Soul from a deck here. Okay. And a virgin birth. Um, as far as my hand, I have a couple star abilities, the uh, <clears throat> the manger, and day of judgment. So the deck that I'm playing is called Monkey Bars, which is a mashup of Chad Chad Soul Surfer deck and Joe Mama's Nazareth Turbo Nazareth deck. I've been playing this deck for a little bit, <clears throat> and on paper, if the it, the deck feels pretty strong. But today we're going to be talking about some of the weaknesses of the deck and. And how things can really go off the rails. So the thing I love about the card like Day of Judgment allows you to play a Lost Soul from each deck. So you choose, okay, opponent, I'm going to play a Lost Soul from your deck. That way you get to look at their deck, you get to see what they're up against, and then you get to grab the best Lost Soul for that scenario. So now I see the opponent has grabbed an Ashkelon, and in the back of my mind, I'm aware that there's this a combo deck running around that is going to try to get Ashkelon and try to get it online and activate it four times in a turn. And that's kind of like, oh man. So my mind right now is thinking about, I I gotta get, I gotta protect myself against Ashkelon. So 
So I get to take a look at his deck. I'm not going to go through every single card in his deck right now, but he's running some sort of Philistine defense with a gold and white offense here. Cards that I need to be aware of right now are cards like uh, Herdsman of Garar. If I'm attacking with Matthew, trying to bot, draw a bunch of cards and he blocks with this Herdsman, then it's going to be bad. And also cards like Elimelech will draw him cards. And so the best card that I have against these cards is my... The Accuser's Lost Soul, which will negate both Herdsman and Elimelech. That's going to be one of the Lost Souls I'm getting here. As far as the other Lost Soul, I was worried about his Ashkelon. And so I ended up choosing the uh, Crowd's Lost Soul to give myself protection. Because I was worried that this was going to happen on turn one. In retrospect, I should have noticed that his deck was not trying to set this up on turn one. Besides, he needs like a way to capture somebody. The cards in his deck aren't really capturing his characters or my characters. He has some cards that do capture stuff, but usually they require like, capturing opponent stuff or whatever. His deck in, in no capacity is set up to do Ashkelon on turn one. What I should have been worrying about is uh, territory class characters. And that is really going to come back to bite me the entire game. This one choice of like getting Crowds Lost Soul over Distressed is going to cost me... Ultimately, I, I feel like the game here. Just just on turn to turn zero, the game hasn't even started yet, but I've already made a decision that, in in retrospect, has cost me the game. Ruth often says they love to play a character called Obed. Well, I like to call this guy Nobed because he uh, <laughs> Nick is neutral cards. So this is turning off artifacts. This is turning off sites. This is turning off lost souls. And my hand is chock full of those. So yep, sure enough, he does have the Obed in his hand, and I immediately recognize. Things are not going to go well for me. He's turning off, he's negating my accusers, which I'm relying on to slow him down on his Elimelech. And he has his sight that goes, grabs an Elimelech from his deck. So I'm already just like, oh no, this is not going well. And even if he does have the Ashkelon combo, now my crowd's lost souls is negated and I'll be vulnerable to that. So that's also now. So I, I do like the Soul Surfer strategy, like getting turn zero interaction, but... One of the weaknesses of Soul Surfer, maybe that, that kind of strategy in general, is uh, it, like one card can just completely negate all this advantage that you tried to spin up. For example, they have Obed. Oh yeah, so Obed requires a, um, a meek character to be in battle. So that's why I think he didn't... Let's see. I don't think he attacked me with the Himalek because my Lost Souls were still active and my hand was still protected. That's why I didn't look at it with 20, 20 shekels. He's attacking with David Hard after God. I'll be blocking with Entrapping Pharisees. And I think I was... He only had a couple cards in his hand, and I knew one of them was um, Love at First Sight. David went and got this one. And so my, my hope was like, okay, maybe he doesn't have anything. Maybe he just got David Love at First Sight. So if I block with Entrapping Pharisees, he's either going to lose his David or he's going to lose his Love at First Sight. Because I know he would have loved to play that card and drew draw eight, eight new cards. So pretty cool combo. David grabbing love at first sight. It's like a nice way to refuel on turn one. So turn one, he has his Obed down. He has a meek David out. So now my lost souls are negated. And now I got to try to f figure out a way around this. But anyways, like I was saying, um, this, these soul surfer strategies, you're spending so, so many slots. You, you've oriented your deck in a way that you're playing cards like Day of Judgment or the Manger or whatever. And these cards in and of themselves aren't the best in the world. And so... If you spend all this deck disadvantage to try and gain an advantage and the opponent just uses one card to negate that advantage, you know, you're going to be on the back foot. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, so I had a Matthew in my hand. I decided to attack. What I should have done here is I should have attacked with the uh, Angel of the Winds, gotten my Peter from my deck. Peter, uh, convert to Meek, play Nazareth, band to Matthew. So I missed a Peter attack there. I miss getting Nazareth in the plate on this turn. Because if you shut the opponent out of searching early, that's going to impact their ability to keep going. They drew a storehouse. I have a shipwreck in my hand, so I'm not too worried about that. The uh, shipwreck can hit Ashkelon or storehouse. So I'm not, I'm not really wanting to fire this off yet. I'm kind of waiting to see. Maybe they're trying to set up their Ashkelon combo right now. And also I have Bethlehem Stable out, which gives me hand protection. I'm not too worried about Ashkelon at this point. I'm kind of hoping they go for it. I know I have hand protection. Maybe he's going to try to... I don't know what he's trying to do here. 
All right. And they used their window of opportunity that I didn't try to shut them down with a Peter to try to play this to get an evil NT card from their deck. And they ended up getting, uh, actually, I don't know if they got it from deck or reserve, but they ended up getting Wage of Sin, which is another search card. Okay. And they deployed the garrison. They have a Philstein that's immune, or sorry, protected from lone heroes. Okay. So yeah, already I'm kicking myself already about not missing the attack with Peter. Because guess what the other, other artifact is? The, the new covenant. I, I can't, I don't know why I completely blanked on attacking with Peter, with Angel, you know? That was just a complete mind blank. I think my hand was like, oh, Matthew. I'm going to attack with Matthew this turn. And I wasn't even considering the other options. An opponent just passes the turn. They put their storehouse down, so that makes it... So my entrapping Pharisees will just have a heyday on whoever decides to enter battle. Okay, I drew a three woes. And now this would be good to negate their Obed or their storehouse or any of their good cards. But there's a part of me that wants to hold on to it just in case. I gotta figure out what this turn's gonna look like for me. I go straight to my attack. I use my Reassuring Angel to exchange my deck with Peter. And Peter will convert to Meek to play Nazareth. So this is what I should have done last turn, I feel like. Now there's Nazareth will protect decks and discard piles and reserves from look and search abilities. And then I'll ban to Matthew. So in my mind, like, okay, this gets around his uh, Philistine garrison. Because now I have two heroes in battle. And what's he going to do? His Wages of Sin is turned off. He can't really search with that anymore. But I, I did know he had this card, Avenged, which captures a character. So Avenged is going to capture a character. Now Matthew's just stuck, and I have nothing to beat him. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to lose my Matthew and my Peter. So I make another misplay here. I, I'm going to go three woes to negate his Avenged. Not only is this really bad because I know he has Wages of Sin, which Wages of Sin can discard somebody. If anything, if, if, I, sh if I would have played anything here, I should have played Three Woes negating Philistine Garrison, then played Day of Judgment. So I lose my Peter, but it's going to be okay. Because now he's just going to play Wages of Sin, kill Peter, and now lose Matthew. And he still has a Garrison out. So number one, um, playing my, my Woes on the enhancement here is bad, especially because I knew what was in his hand. But I just forgot, apparently. Number two, playing Woes as a good card only lets me negate his, his neutral and evil cards now. Significantly, I've just cut myself off from being able to negate Obed and Nazareth. This is another small decision that I also feel like ultimately lost me the game. A lot of this deck revolves around being able to use your neutral cards to draw cards. So once you do have that Nazareth down, you're going to rely on cards like Daenerys or Four Drock McCoin to get, get you the gas you continue to need. And Obed is also, you know, attacking my ability to get my Lost Souls out. So cards like that I'm going to be relying on, like Complacent. Having no access to Complacent really puts this deck at a disadvantage. I'm not playing battle-winning dominance. And if the opponents are playing battle-winning dominance, I'm heavily disadvantaged in the combat step. I put him at a little stalemate for now, but Kevin seems like he understands his deck and he understands the matchup. And he realizes if he can de defend and if he can get me to play out my evil characters from my hand, he's going to be able to leverage that and play the long game. This, this Turbo Nazareth deck, it's not meant to play the long game. My deck can't really get to the five lost souls if the opponent is chipping away at my resources and keeping Nazareth online. Like, I need my reserve to win the game. End up using Authority of Christ there to uh, set aside a character from my hand to draw some cards in a couple turns. And I'm, I'm stuck in the unfortunate situation where I have a bunch of cards in my hand that I can't use. Patmos, that's not, that's first of all, negated by Obed. But second of all, I, I can't search my reserve or my discard pile anymore. So Matthew is just, and Peter are just sitting there in my discard pile, even though I have a Patmos. I have a Crowd's Choice in my hand. And that's also just routing away because I can't search anything. Now, I also drew second coming, you know. And this card's going to sit in my hand for the rest of the game. I'll, I'll end up playing the last turn of the game. This card's still in my hand. Not, I haven't been able to play it. So so I'm making little decisions here. Little decisions there. Like laying down my brood of vipers. Because I got to get down to hand size. And I don't want to discard my Patmos. But these little tiny decisions are all going to add up. When it just passes the turn, he knows exactly what he has to do to win this game. My defense with Entrapping plus Breed of Vipers. I feel like he doesn't want to attack me because he knows that if I attack him, I get a chance to underdeck his Obed with my Breed of Vipers. And he, I feel like he, he's really aware of that fact. 
Now, right now, I'm just trying to draw into some more disciples so I can get attacking again. But I haven't drawn into any. Instead, I've only drew into my Akeem the Compiler, which will be negated by his distressed lost soul. <laughs> and I redrew the reassuring angel. And so this is probably where I really start to feel this kind of dull ache that I was talking about, this, this kind of lingering or building, mounting frustration. Because in my mind, I'm aware of, of what's happening. And by this point, I've realized the mistakes I made with the lost soul choices at the beginning of the game. And then how, how dumb putting this three woes on, on good was and letting him get, I, so by now I, I'm mentally like, not only am I having to navigate the game, I'm also having to navigate this internal critic in my mind that is telling me all the mistakes I've made so far, you know? And I feel like I'm a type of person who has really strong internal critic. Now, on one hand, it's really helpful in scenarios like this where I break down the game and I get to see exactly what I'm doing wrong. But it, while I'm playing a game, that internal critic is going off really loudly. And that's actually impacting my ability to play to the best of my ability. I'm so like kind of in my head at this point. I end up discarding harvest time. I don't, okay, okay. So uh, in my mind, okay. Okay, I have a reason for that. Okay, uh, so in my mind, I'm like, I look through his deck, all the lost souls in his deck that are left are like cards that are lost souls that are going to give him an advantage, like the grumbled lost soul. So if I play harvest time and I get the remaining lost soul in my deck, I think the only one left in my deck is uh, distressed. In my mind, I'm like, okay, Obed is out negating lost souls. So I don't need to play this harvest time because I would be gaining nothing opponent would be gaining something. So that's why I discard Harvest Time. Now, <laughs> getting Distress Lost Soul out is perhaps my only window to get me out of this Obed tyranny. If there's ever a scenario where I'm able to remove Obed from play, and he tries to put Obed back into his territory, lost, this Distress Lost Soul is going to be turned on, and Obed is going to be negated. So I think I should have gone for the Harvest Time for one there, just to give myself the option for an out. You know, but this is a, it's another misplay that I make. I discarded Harvest Time. For, and now here's comes here comes the opponent. He's drawn his uh, three woes. And now Jephthah's come to, to destroy everything. Once per game, you may discard the top card of your deck to discard up to two evil characters. He's going to be negating my Hare's Temple protection and discarding the Brood of Vipers and the Entrapping Pharisees, which are my two best evil characters right now, for sure. I know he, his deck doesn't play a lot of uh, good enhancements and stuff, so Entrapping Pharisee is going to be really good against him, but he was smart. He got rid of both of those. And Brood of Vipers, that was going to be my easy block to get rid of Obed. And here's the thing. I, I, I kind of recognize, like, oh, if I can get Obed out of play, then I can maybe get a shot at this. So I use my uh, so I use my recruiting rulers to bounce Obed. And if I had my Distressed in play, this would be amazing for me. Number one, I was trying to do this play where if I bounced Obed, then my Lost Souls would turn on, and then my Accusers would negate Jephthah. But it turns out, that I, I, I want to ask kind of confirmation of this, but if, if I bounce Obed and Accusers turns back on, which negates OT humans in battle, that doesn't interrupt and rewind Jephthah's ability, apparently. Because that has already happened, and the Accusers Lost Soul is an ongoing prevent, I guess. So in the moment, I had this play. I was like, okay, maybe I can bounce Obed. I will get turn my accusers on. Maybe there's some chance I can undo all the damage that Jephthah did. But that was not the case. I ended up deciding to give him a lost soul. I knew he had in his hand, he had the uh, Amazing Faith card. So if I had gone, scattered sheep, put him in special initiative, he could have played Amazing Faith. And I could have done anything, I think. I didn't have a meek lost soul to make my tenants kill a son CBP. Or else I maybe would have played something. So yeah, right now I'm just like super <laughs> tilted. And also, I'm also tilted because I realized if I had gotten Distress out of my deck, put it in play, it would have negated Obed once he played him back down. So, so that's another mistake I'm, I'm realizing in real time. And now I'm drawing all, all these artifacts and they're all negated. And I just feel very, very stuck. Admittedly, because of my own decisions up to this point. I finally drew a hero that has Clay Brigade in it. I would have loved to have drawn Simon here, but here comes Lazarus. Lazarus coming in. Now, if I had been able to negate Obed, I would have been able to turn all my Lost Souls online, which would have meant the Accusers would have been online and Complacent would have been online, you know. 
And these could have, could have, those cards would have, in theory, have really helped me out in the combat step. On his deck is full of battle winning dominance. And I'm about to run straight headfirst into a lot of them, I feel like. Blocking me with Raider's Camp. He's going to be taking out my hand protection. He's discarding the stable. Raider's Camp, 7 5, capture a human in territory, discard a fortress, or take an artifact. And yep, he's using Raider's Camp, getting that free value, and then using Falling Away. So the reason his Rage Camp wasn't uh, negated is because he had Humble Lost Soul out. And since I had more cards in my hand than the opponent, his uh, card was cannot be prevented in battle. And yeah, so brutal. Just absolutely brutal right now. There's a part of me that's surprised he hasn't really dealt with Nazareth. He has a three woes out and he has the option to discard fortresses, but he's left. he's opted to keep that alive. So I think at some point he realizes how much this is hurting me. So he's like, okay, Tim, you can keep your Nazareth out. I'm just going to be discarding the cards like Herod's Temple or your Stable because I don't need my reserve to win the game. I don't need to search. I'm going to take down your hand protection and now I'm just going to start carving you up with looking at your hand and figuring out exactly, you know. So just, just really well played the opponent. Kevin is really, really solid right now. I, gotta, I just got to recognize that. Okay, he's coming in, he's coming in with an attack with two characters. So there's a part of me that's pretty excited. I'm like, okay, I have a scattered sheep in my hand. And if I can just get initiative and play something, then I, I'm doing the numbers in my head. I think Nero is going to gain initiative against these characters. So I'm like, oh yeah, so this is easy block. Just block with Nero, play Scattered Sheep. What is he going to do? Angel of the Lord me? He can't Angel of the Lord me. Nero's protected from dominance. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this, this block here. And then he's playing Amazing Faith. I'm not sure why, though. He's negating, negating evil cards in battle. So I'm like, okay... And then he's playing Glory of the Lord. Glory of the Lord will restrict uh, placements on characters this turn. So here's the question did, that I'm kind of confused about. Does Glory of the Lord prevent Nero from playing enhancements? Because Nero is protected from dominance. Is he protected from this restriction that Glory of the Lord is applying? And maybe that's why the opponent played Amazing Faith? So what ended up looking like a really great block for me got turned into a complete absolute disaster because of glory of the lord if i was expecting glory of the lord i don't know what it could have done there again it's these battle winning dominance that are really giving the opponent an edge lazarus i couldn't break through with lazarus my my solid block with nero got completely just dumpstered and i think the score is one to one now or sorry he has two i haven't updated the score there it's currently i have one lost soul opponent has two and again this all these tiny mistakes are just kind of adding up Okay, yeah, sorry. There's so, apparently some construction going on next door. People are banging on the walls. So if you hear banging, I do want to apologize about that. But honestly, there's nothing I can do. Okay, and I'm making the best I can of a bad situation. The best attack I have here is Lazarus. Okay, okay. Another thing, I, okay. Oh, let's talk about that later. Okay, opponent is coming back with the Raiders camp. He still has his humble out, which I, I guess I could have negated. But Lazarus isn't negating evil cards right now so it's just me versus him he he was using trying to use raiders camp to discard claudius which was smart but then i'm going to be using the ascension to interrupt the battle which will interrupt the last card played or right? an opponent's special characters opponent's special abilities of their characters i'll be banning to a bunch of stuff doing a bunch of cool things with his characters and then i banned it to his 24 elders which shuffled an artifact from my hand to negate evil cards so I'm wanting to keep my Emperor Claudius alive because I'm literally running out of evil characters. It didn't help that last turn when he attacked with Bartimaeus, he reserved a uh, Nicodemus from the top of my deck. And what also was really fortunate for me is, is my, when I banded to his Bartimaeus, I reserved the top card of a deck. Guess what it was? I reserved his Son of God from the top of his deck. So that actually gives me a chance here. I'm like, okay opponent is definitely pulling ahead in offense if i can just keep racing with him i can keep maybe keep up maybe win the race if opponent has a sun god in his deck i feel like there's no shot of me winning this game at this point but since bartimaeus was a blind flip and took it off the top of his deck this makes this game pretty interesting now despite kind of the inability of my deck to do things and despite like how badly my defense is getting carved up i'm thinking like okay if i can just get another good attack in uh 
play the resurrection, ban to a bunch of people, keep drawing cards. Mm, maybe there's a shot I can get, turn off this Nazareth somehow. You know, I'm just trying to figure out the best way I can win. Okay, so anyways, what I was saying about last turn is I had drawn Mary. Mary, Holy Virgin. She requires unity, heroes to be gospel. And guess what I've been doing this game? I've been playing down by... Uh, yeah, let's play down Angel of the Winds and, and let's play out the... Uh, yeah, my reassuring angels. So when I when I play these guys down in my territory, I know I'm like, I don't want to. There's part of me that doesn't want to discard them. I'm like, oh, I can't discard these cards. Maybe they'll be useful one day. By playing down these cards, I have no way to turn on my Mary Unity. I'm locking myself out of Mary this entire game. So losing Mary, losing her ability to get rid of her opponent's three woes here. I mean, their three woes have already has already done enough, but. I I just feel like such a dingus at this point. I mean, I, you know, at this point of the game, there's that inner critic that I was talking to you about, and he's has compiled a checklist of all the things I've done wrong, and that list is growing bigger and bigger by each turn. And yeah, opponent just played Angel of the Lord to get rid of my Claudius in my territory, and now opponent just walks in for the free lost soul. Nothing I can do about that. I'm just trying to, in my mind right now. Is there any way I can turn off my own Nazareth? Because let, let's say. I attack, I get the lost soul. I'm able to use second coming to go grab the god from my discard pile, win the game, but I don't literally think I have any way to do that. I drew Priest of Zeus, which is big. I needed another evil character. I feel like he's the last one in my deck. And so I'm feeling pretty good with Priest of Zeus. It's like if he keeps attacking me with his gold characters this turn, I can block with Priest of Zeus. And I feel like he's out of battle winning dominance. The, last, the score is three to three. I keep forgetting to update the score down there. So I'm like, okay, if I can just make two more rescue attempts, I have, I have enough gas to do that. If I can just make two more rescue attempts, hold off, hold off one or two rescue attempts with my priest and my enhancements, then maybe there's a shot I can win. And I'm feeling especially hopeful because I know Son of God is not in the equation. Okay, but ladies and gentlemen, let us look at the Pagan Sailor. If blocking, you may activate an artifact from your artifact pile. Yep, that's a good card, huh? It's an inconspicuous card. You don't think much of it until this happens to you. The opponent says, Pagan Sailors block, activate stocks. Uh-oh. Your special initiative, do you have a card that's negating artifacts? Because if you don't, you're, you're dead. You're captured. <laughs> so if I'd seen this play coming, maybe something I should have done was, um, before blocks, play my resurrection, for example. And that way, I would have been able to have multiple heroes. So if he tries to go for this block, it's not going to do much. And I like the resurrection play because I can ban to his, uh, and that negate his all his evil cards again. So I I lose it. I lose an attack here because of something that I should have seen coming. This is the first time I've ever gotten pagan sailor slash stocks. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And, it, and again, it's another mistake. To add it added to the pile of Baboony Tim's mistakes this game. I think my biggest enemy this game is not my opponent, but it's actually myself. <laughs> the opponent is playing great. And after this game, you know, we're going to go our separate ways. But the mental critic that I have, that, that one's just going to stay there. And I'm going to be dealing with, I ended up wrestling with him. I was taking like a car, tr car ride after this. And all I could think about after, was on the car ride was this game. And I was like trying to like say, hey, Tim, it's okay. Losing is fine. And it's time to not think about this right now. It's time to move on with our day. But uh, there's part of me that was just stuck on this. And part of me only felt like I could move on after I processed and thought about the game. So I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to, to deal with scenarios like this. Is it better to just kind of think about it, let it get it all out of your brain, and then move on? Or is it better to just like move on and not think about it? I don't know. I could see going either way. Okay, score is three to three. It's one of It's a longer game. We both had a lot of turns at the beginning there that were kind of weird in the sense that we were just passing the turn to each other. But we've really now hit the end game here. And my deck is not equipped to deal with, to win in the end game. My attacks are pretty mediocre at best. My blocks are just hanging on by a Cheeto. And he's going to use his uh, 20 shekels to play the last evil character out of my hand. And I, I know it's coming at this point. I know he's playing Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus attacking here to get rid of my blocker. That's going to spell doom for me. And so at that point, I'm just kind of like, okay, how can I get to the fourth lost soul? How can I try to make this game 
instead of him winning 5-3. Because at this point, I know I I know I have a, don't have any defense left, and I guess I'm just banking on the resurrection to try and give me a lost soul here. The entire game, I, my neutral cards have been negated. So all those artifacts you see there, it's like Book of the Covenant, which would have done nothing anyways. All these cards... All these lost souls are negated. Complacent. I'm just looking at complacent this entire game. Just kind of shaking my head because I knew how brutal this card would have been if the opponent hadn't been able to negate it. Like all those plays with falling away, glory of the Lord. Um, and then there's another play coming up that he's going to use another battle winning dominant. You know, that that definitely cost me. It cost me the lost souls, cost me the game. So I'm, I'm down to my last three cards. <laughs> Simon the Zealous is here. I've been wanting to get this card for the entire game. He's at the bottom of my deck. He's finally here. And I'm like, okay, easy. I just attack with Simon, choose a blocker, play Authority of Christ in the game, and get the Lost Soul and call it a game. In my mind, I'm like, okay. Okay, at least we can get another Lost Soul here. Like, what's he going to do? He's, he's out of battle dominance, right? He's played, he's played Falling Away, played Angel of the Lord, played Glory of the Lord. What else is there? I think he has one more dominant left. That he hasn't gotten to play, and we're about to figure out what that is. So he's asking for dominant initiative. I'm like, okay, maybe it's Christian Martyr. So how do I play around Christian Martyr? So if he's asking for dominant initiative, I can play my stuff first. I'm gonna play the resurrection to ban to all his characters, and I'm gonna ban to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is gonna reserve his blocker. So I'm trying to play around Christian Martyr here. Now if you, even if you don't have any dominance left in your deck, you can still technically ask for dominant initiative. So maybe he's just like uh, trying to mind game me and put me a special initiative. He plays a card that maybe negates that, and then he plays Scattered Sheep. So you know, that, that would have been a really <laughs> crazy line of play if opponent had no dominance left. Because maybe he was just dead to Simon blocking. He had no dominance, and I just play Authority Christ, and, you know, I get the Lost Soul. But he did have the Ring of Fear, which just cannot be negated which will negate uh, Zacchaeus, which will negate, you know, 24 elders. But it won't negate Simon because Simon, uh, to meek, that ability is no longer negatable, I guess, or targetable or whatever. And so now we're in this moment here where if the opponent has like a scattered sheep, I'm pretty screwed. Let's find out what dominant they used to get them out of this pickle. Can't use falling weight, but they do have the gripes of wrath. And this is absolutely the worst case scenario for me. Discard their card, shuffle all the characters into the deck. And now, opponent, I can try to do a new rescue tip. But guess what? I don't have any clay brigade guys left, and they have a Goliath in play. So if I attack with my John, and they just block with their Goliath, pushed out of battle, and what am I gonna do? Block with attack you with one of my angels, my Akeem, or my my White Mary? No, I, I I'm I know I basically at this point I'm just like there's no way I can break through. He has a bunch of giants. It, you know, the game's just over. The game's just over. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't been updating the score down there. After every lost soul that's rescued, I should be pressing Command S on my keyboard, which will save the game and update that score automatically. But in this game, obviously, I've had a lot to think about, and saving the game isn't one of those things I have completely turned into a muscle memory yet. And here comes the pagan sailors again, back to finish the job with stocks. And I don't have any silver enhancements to get me out of this, so that's where I concede the game to him. So well played, opponent. That was a masterclass of how to come back from a shaky beginning and deal with Nazareth. And there's the game, 5-3. This game was a game that, that showed the weaknesses of Nazareth. And also, one of those weaknesses being the pilot of the deck. <laughs> putting that Nazareth as, or sorry, putting the three woes as good. Locking myself out of getting rid of Obed in Nazareth, you know. That was probably one of the biggest a, um, decisions there. It cost me the game, for sure, for sure. But anyways, I've I've gotten to talk about this game. I feel like it's out of my system, and I feel like I can finally like, move on with my life. I have to sit here and get stuck in this. I can just take the lessons that I've learned. Okay, move on. Hopefully I won't repeat them again. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I feel like maybe... You know the show The Office where you watch it and it's really cringy, but you kind of want to watch it? I feel like this 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 video was the definition of cringe from Redemption. Like if maybe you could have easily said in your mind, like, oh, I would have never played Three Woes on that or whatever. And so you were watching me do this and you're watching me misplay. It can be kind of cringy. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with it. 
I hope you learned something and we'll see you around next time. Bye.